The Muslim lantern gets completely humbled by this woman in Christ. It's very beautiful because this woman of God completely humbles Muslim lantern using the word of God, the Quran, and historical proof that is non-biased. Please watch until the end because I guarantee you, you will not regret it. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. What? Excuse me. Why are you lying about the four wives? You, you just said that Islam doesn't teach that you can have Do you want to have a discussion with me? Uh, can I ask you one question? Why did you lie? Well, I'm asking you a question first. Do you, do you want to have uh, Do you want to have a discussion with me? I want to have a discussion, but I would like to, uh, you to These answer why. Do you want to touch me, please? Thank you. Fuck off. Yeah? No, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't care. You shouldn't care. The whole lot. And you don't want to fucking try to take a kiss out of them. Are you mad? Fuck off. Don't, don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Muslim, I'm Hindu, yeah? You're Hindu. But I understand. I understand. You know I understand. I understand. I understand. You can't come here yeah. and stop people. And force their beliefs on other people, isn't it? Yeah. I know. They have some sort. Yes. 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 You know, no, actually, I think they've been coming here a few, few times. They're looking for me, you know? I'm part, they, they, I, I don't know why they're looking for me. If, you, if you're looking for me, sorry. They have all the places of the world. They come to this yeah. as the, the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah, I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah? But you can't do all this. Yes. You know what I mean? But curse them for what? For preaching their own religion, are you mad? Yeah, you're causing problems in this world. All you lot, you are. He's a lady, you should be swear. No, no, man, I don't give a damn. He's handling it, don't worry about it. Can I'll, talk, I'll talk to her, don't worry, don't worry. So you want to talk to me, you said, right? Uh, I will, but I would rather he leaves because he makes you feel uncomfortable. I, 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 he's, a, he's, a, he's a Hindu brother. I don't control him. I don't have authority over him. This is a, a public place. I cannot say to him, leave. We're Indian. We're, we're all the same color, yeah? We look after each other. No, he's not you Indian. Know, he's Arab. He says we're the same color. He says we're the same color. We're the same color. We are the same color. Go away, man. Fuck off. It's, it's okay. It's okay. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Okay. I'm a bit shaken up by it. Oh, it's okay. He touch you. I thought. No, he, he was very abusive. Is that not no. abusive? Okay, to you? What you her, what saying he's abusive. I, I think he saw you. I think. I think. I think he saw you. I think he saw you, and he saw your actions of trying to push your belief on other people. We're standing here peacefully. You're coming with three, four cameras, trying to tell us what you think and what is your belief and what you want. We didn't invite you here today. I'm sure we didn't. We, I have no idea that you guys are coming here today. So he saw something from outside he doesn't know who you are he doesn't know who I am I never met this guy in my life and he's a Hindu as he stated himself right but he saw you he felt you guys are pressing yourselves trying to enforce your beliefs on us so then he was trying to kind of give you a taste of your own medicine that's, that's how I felt right but, but he seems like a nice person that's, that's how I saw do you think it's okay to uh, swear and abuse women Swear and abuse women? Of course not. Absolutely not. It's not. It's not okay. Absolutely not. You just said that it was justified. Do you think it's okay to force your beliefs on other people? No, I, I, I'm not forcing. I just asked you why did you. Like I didn't say you were. I just asked you a question. Do you think it's okay to force your beliefs on other people? I don't force my beliefs on anyone. Excellent. So do you want to have a discussion with me? That's the first question I asked. Uh, I want to ask. So the, the, yes, sure. We're having a discussion now. So why did, did so, you... So in a discussion, two people engage with each other. Yeah. We don't interrupt each other, hopefully. And you're trying to teach me something, and I'm trying to teach you something. Is that correct? I wanted to find out, um, how come did you lie to that man? How comes I lied to that man? I will come to that, my question to that man. Can you first affirm the premise of what we're doing? Do you agree that in a discussion, someone teaches the other person something, the other person learns from the other person, we allow each other to speak, it's a dialogue, it's not a monologue. And we also answer the points that we make. So I hope you're listening to what I'm saying and you will deal with what I say. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Are you setting the house rules or something? Yes, I am setting the house rules. I'm coming, I'm coming to a specific point. Do you agree with that? I'm a civilized person, you know. So you agree? We're both teaching each other, we're learning from each other, we're having a discussion. I don't know how much you can teach me, to be honest. No, no, I, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very, I'm a very, uh, I'm a person who's still learning every day. You might know more than me. But the question is, do you agree? Are you trying to come and teach me, right? Now, let me ask you this. So you, you don't want to teach anything? I just want to, I'm not a teacher. I'm here to tell people how to get saved. So are you coming to learn from me? I just want to understand our, 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 our interaction. Are you coming to teach me something or learn from me? I, I came here uh, because I had some questions about Islam. So you're coming to learn? Uh, 
So if you have questions, you are, you're waiting for someone to teach you the answers. So you're coming to learn? Yeah, you okay. can say that. No yeah. problem. So you're not here to teach anything? I'm not a teacher. I'm an evangelist. Okay, so do you teach something to other people or you don't teach something I to other people? I share the gospel with other people. Is that a form of teaching? Um, well, it depends. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's a very simple sure. question I'm trying to get an answer to. Do you Are you here to teach as well? Or are you here just to listen to the answers to the questions I'm going to give you? Because if you say... It's complicated. No, it's very important. Because if you're here to learn... No, you, to be honest, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm still... Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm still kind of shocked that you kind of... Do you want some water? Um, I'll have some, thank okay, you. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm still a bit shocked. Ah. Um, yes. I'm still a little bit shocked that you basically justified a man abusing me and swearing at me. I'm still... I'm okay, that's, that's your own words. Uh, trying to put words in my mouth is not going to work. No, you, what, I clearly said no when you asked me the question, are you justifying? I said no. Okay. So you're, you're, not, you're not being sincere with yourself. I thought Christianity teaches to be sincere with yourself. What, what did you think about his behavior towards me? He was yeah, cursing women is very bad. So why it's horrible. You, it's horrible. So why you shouldn't you, degrade women and you shouldn't call them dogs. Do you believe you should call women dogs? What is your point? Do you believe we should call women dogs? If you're talking about Jesus... We oh, can do you think your God calls women... I didn't say Jesus, you said that. I know you were going Do you think there. your God calls women dogs? Is that what you believe? Can you, can you, I didn't say Jesus. You said why Jesus. You, why you I just asked a question. One, okay, why are you jumping from one thing to the next? You asked me a question. Do you think we should curse women? I, I clearly okay. said no. I asked so you a question in return. Why did you say anything to him? Why did you kind of just... Okay, because it's a, he's not a Muslim and it's a public place. I don't know the guy. It's just someone walking so by what, in a public what place. What did you say to him when he was swearing at me and uh, telling me to... I didn't say anything. And I, and because I, I didn't want to make the situation even bigger when someone is angry is coming to preach something the right way to deal with them is to let them just like you didn't speak back to him correct that's the right way to deal with the people so I didn't speak back to him because it's not my business he's coming to talk to you and I don't know who he is so I have no authority over him why should I talk to him okay okay no, so now let's talk about something productive right because okay. this is something irrelevant right no, I just, uh, are you here to teach I, something I, or are you just here to learn um, uh, I just wish next time if you see a man abusing a woman, I, I hope that you can be more gentleman and actually say something more because I don't feel like as a woman you were protecting me. I feel like you were just allowing him to... Um, no, I didn't think you needed protection because you have three or four people with you, three men. No, Why do you need my protection? It's not about protection. I don't understand it's why about, you need my protection. It's about, you know, that is, um, in a minute, it's, it's about, you know, just... You, you mentioned you, it, not me. It, yeah, it's about if you see a man abusing a woman, you know, a man should... Why did the, the four men with you speak? Why are you coming to talk to the Muslim who has nothing to do with I'm, you? So you I, should preach that to your, your people, your colleagues. You should say to them, okay. all my Christian colleagues who care about your Christian sister, you should have been defending me. Instead of coming to a Muslim who doesn't doesn't know who you are or never met you in his life trying to enforce him trying to defend you in a specific way you should speak to your friends one two three four five six seven you can show I don't know how many people over there you know so so and he's trying to show you what to say he should have been defending you shouldn't he have been defending you instead of showing you what to say there's more Muslims than Christians here so um, anyway I wish because it is on camera anyway I wish you would have said something to him but it seemed like he justified we all have wishes we all have wishes in life but we don't all get what we want my question was in, in eventually the man uh, I don't know who he was but he had like a hundred people following him I don't know that guy but he said that in Islam uh, you allowed to have four wives and you said no Islam doesn't teach that so I said why are you lying? I didn't say that no you didn't say that no. why did you say that I will come back to the main question if you answer it we will we'll move forward into a discussion right are you here to teach are you here to teach or are you here to just learn? If you're here to ask me questions only, I'm happy to give you answers. But when I'm giving you answers, you shouldn't be arguing with me if you're not here to teach. But if you are here to teach... We're having a conversation. A conversation works that, you know... Do you know why I'm asking that question? Because from what I know, the Bible clearly teaches that a woman should remain silent. She shouldn't teach. So I'll, if you're coming here to teach, then you're opposing your own scripture. But if you're not here to teach, if you're here to just learn something, if you're here to ask a question and wait for an answer, I'm happy to answer. You now what I said, mm -hmm. go, ahead. go ahead, you want to say something? Yeah, so that's why I said I'm not a teacher, okay. right? However, so the, you're Bible, here to learn. the Bible said uh, that all 
people should evangelize. That's why the, when Jesus resurrected, um, the first woman, there was a woman actually that he told to go and tell everybody. Are you talking to me or to the cameras? Oh, there were, the people will be watching I'm, I'm the talking camera. to you, okay, not to the cameras. I, These you know, are irrelevant. I'm used to people watching. Okay, the we can talk. We can have a. We said we have a conversation, not with the camera, with okay. me, right? Okay. So, right. Yeah, in the Bible it says women shouldn't teach uh, to men, it specifically says, you know, women can teach other women, women can teach children, however, all are commanded to share the gospel. So God. you shouldn't teach me? Um, According to share the, the Bible. Gospel. I can share the gospel because you don't have the truth in I didn't you. talk about sharing, I talked about teaching, you shouldn't teach me. Um, I can share the gospel, right? But in Islam, women can teach, I'm happy for any woman to come and teach a Muslim I, I, woman, I'm happy. because I, I, I've never seen women and men in the mosque together, so... It, have you been to a mosque before? I have been, Which yeah. one? I've been to the East London Mosque. And there is no women in East London Mosque? I only see men going to the mosque. I don't I, see... So you went, you, went to the, you went to the men section? There's a whole, there's a whole building called the Maryam... I see also, if you I'm allow me, If you allow me to answer you, there's a whole building called the Maryam Center in East London, which is just only for women. So I, I don't know how you can miss a whole building. <laughs> so, are men and women allowed to be together in the mosque? In the time of the Prophet والسلام, men used to pray in the uh, in the front and women used to pray in the back. So they were in the same location. There's no problem with that in Islamic. Okay. That might surprise you, but there is no problem with what that. What about now? Because what I'm trying to say is that I have even now, even now, um, a man can pray and a woman can pray in the back. There's no problem. Because they can be in the same location. There's no issues. Because when I pass um, by the mosque, I only see men. I've never seen. Women. How do you pass by the mosque? I, but because it is. Um, you know, there are mosques everywhere in London, right? You okay. can walk past them. You have to enter there. them. You cannot pass by them to see what's going on inside. You have I to see enter. I crowd of men outside the mosque. I don't see women. So, are men and women... That's a good point. So Churches are, are empty so and mosques are full of people. So are men and women allowed to be in the same room? I answered that question. No, you said in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. No, no, I said even today you can do that. It's no problem. Even today you Even can do today. That. If today I, I start praying here and women pray here in the back and I pray here, it's no problem, Islamically. What is about, so do you pray in public? We can pray in public, yes. Yeah, in fact, the Prophet Muhammad said, to answer the, this question specifically, he said, Fuddiltu ala nabiyina bisit. I was given six virtues over the other messengers or the other prophets. So he had specific six characteristics the other messengers were not, did not receive from the Creator. One of them is he said, the earth was made as a mosque for me. So the whole earth was made as a prayer, a place of prayer for me. So as long as I find a clean place that does not have any, anything dirty in it, I can pray in it as a Muslim. Do you know what the Bible says about uh, praying in public? It says that it's hypocritical and that's the whole reward that you will get. Do you know that? No problem. Why would I concern myself what the Bible teaches about prayer? Um, I'm not a Christian. It's the truth. It's truth the according truth. to you? Um, well, do you believe in the Injil? I believe in the... What is the Injil? The Gospel. Gospel of who? Which one? Christ. Which one do I what believe do you, in? The think? gospel of Jesus Christ. I agree with you. So when Jesus Christ was walking, was he teaching the people the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, which was written later on? Or which gospel was he teaching? He, he is the good news. He's the gospel, right? The, listen. I'm the listening. Bible account, yeah, is the, what, what Jesus did. What, you know, is the gospel is Jesus Christ, yeah? The, the Bible is an account of what Jesus did. The Bible is God's diary, right? It was written after Jesus. It, it doesn't change, you know, who, who Jesus is, what he did on the cross. You didn't ask me, do you believe in Jesus? You said, do you believe in the gospel, right? So I, so you're, you're confusing, you're confusing. I don't know why you have to whisper things in her ear. She can handle herself, right? Well, the gospel, the, no one is whispering anything to my ears. Since I started the discussion, it's on camera, right? No one needs to whisper anything into my ear. We can have a discussion, as I said, me and you. You don't need someone to teach you something else, right? Okay, Jesus. Okay, so Jesus. Jesus was walking and he was teaching something. He was not teaching his biography of his life because his life was not over yet, right? So he was teaching something else and that was the gospel. That's the gospel that Muslims believe in. So when you say, so when you ask me the question, do you believe in the gospel? Yes, I believe in the gospel. The gospel is, that I believe in is the gospel of Jesus, not the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. What is the good news of Jesus Christ? What, what is the good news? What is the gospel? He's coming as a messenger of the Creator, a chosen messenger of the Creator. He's telling the people that they should 
obey the Creator, worship the Creator alone. Do not associate partners with Him. Do not do idol worship. And He gives glad tidings of messengers that will come after Him. Many things, many things. That's some of it. The most important thing is to say the message to the people. To worship the Creator, not the creation. So don't worship a human being, a man or a woman or an idol. Worship the Creator who created everything. Okay, so how many pages do you have in the Quran approximately that speak about Isa? Because it's not Jesus. I didn't count them. I didn't count them. Approximately, you could have a look and tell me. I, I didn't count them. He's mentioned by name 25 times. By name. 25 times. B but that's by name. Mm -hmm. So so he could be described not by name in m more places, right? So I'm talking about specifically by name. But the number of exact pages that talks about Isa alayhi salam, I'm not aware. Mm -hmm. But he was only mentioned 25 times. It's a good times. research you can do. Huh? It's a good research you can do yeah, in uh, your free time. I mean, I wish that, you know, yeah. because you're talking about a different Jesus, right? Uh, I wish that you could explain. Now, Jesus was Isa was mentioned in the Quran 25 times. By name, right? by name. By name. So, does any Muslim in here know? How Again, are you talking to me or are you because talking you to... You don't know. No, but I want to say something just to, just to state this clear. If you're here to talk to me, that's why I asked you in the beginning. I was very clear. Are you here to have a discussion with me? Why am I, you said are you sitting in the house rolls and you laugh? No, I'm making so I'm making a principle for us to move forward based on it, right? So if you're here to talk to the people, you can go talk to the people. If you're here to talk to me, then you should be talking to me and ask as a, and that's why I asked you are you here to teach or speak to me? You're here to ask questions, you said. So I'm waiting for your questions okay. and I'm answering them. So should I because you couldn't answer you Wh which one did I could I couldn't I, answer? I asked how many times is Jesus mentioned in the uh, so how many pages and roughly how how much context do you have talking about Jesus? You said exactly your question. How many pages mentions Jesus? Or how many times? Like, what is the content of Jesus in the Quran? I'm not sure. You can do your research on that. Let's Google it, right? I'm not sure Google is a, is a credible scholar to but have the answers to these questions. Sorry? You don't know the answer either. So no, when, know you do not, when you do not know something, you do research. That's why I was telling you to do research. I don't know if Christians do that as well, but as Muslims, we're taught to do research, right? So I can open the book and check how many pages talk about him instead of going to Sheikh Google. Right, so we have um, in. Um, so in. Uh, I've just Googled it. It says that Jesus was mentioned 26 times as Jesus and eight times as the Messiah. Now, my question to you. I'm not sure this is accurate. Okay, I've just Googled it because you don't know. That's so, not Google, that's a website. Yeah, I've Googled and I put on a website. Yeah, which what is the website called? Uh, you don't know. I've just got, it's the first thing, it's the first So you just Google things and the first thing that pops up is the truth. Okay. Well, is that how you believe Jesus is God? You just Google is Jesus is God. Let's get this straight, right? Okay. So, we have more content of Jesus Christ. I don't know by the way you're shouting, right? I'm, not, I'm just in front of you, but go ahead. Okay, I'll try not to shout. I do have a loud voice. Because you know women are supposed to be feminine, right? Are you trying to say I'm not feminine? No. no. I'm making, I'm stating a fact that women should, are supposed to be feminine. Okay. Um, Unless you disagree. I, um, I agree, I have a loud voice. No also, problem, go ahead. You interrupt me quite a lot, so it makes it difficult for me to speak. Uh, you're asking me questions, so I have to answer. Okay, so you don't know how, so you don't know how often was Jesus mentioned in the Quran? You said about 25 times. Um, now, my, my kind of uh, question is, no, I said by name, he's mentioned 25 times clearly. This is something I know. I said the instances that talk about him in general, I'm not sure how many. Okay, so um, do you agree that the Quran has a shorter account of Jesus than the Bible? A shorter account of Jesus? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. All right. So you want my my approval, stamp of approval? Yes, it okay. does. So because the Quran is not a biography of Jesus, mm -hmm. or or biography of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or biography of any messenger. Yeah. So it's not focused on an individual, a human being. It's com it's, com it's focused on the Creator of the universe, the one you should be worshiping. Okay. Uh, I I worship God, and this is why. Because, I didn't say you, you don't. Right. Can I please, uh, you know? Of course. Please, finish. I want to be feminine and respectful, like you said. But it's difficult when every word you drop. Thank you. So, do you agree that if the Quran has shorter accounts of Jesus, as shorter accounts of the prophets, and they're different stories, that is less reliable?
Bible than something that was written before, which has longer, extensive content. It doesn't make sense. Let's say you write a book today, right? Or even not today. Let's say you write, you, the prophets write books over thousands of years, they write accounts. And then a few hundred years later comes this guy, and he can't, he, not only he changes the story, but the accounts are a lot shorter and inconsistent. It, why would you, anybody follow that? Okay, I answered the question already. Is it the, the Quran is not a story about Jesus. The Quran is about the Creator. So it should not be talking in thousands of pages about a human being who lived his life. Even if he was a mighty messenger of God. Even if we love him. Even if we revere him. It does not mean the book should be talking everywhere about him. Similarly, that just as the Quran does not talk everywhere about Prophet Muhammad or any other messenger of God. Who is the Messiah? So that's a new question now. Okay, who's yeah. the Messiah? The Messiah is the person who's chosen by God to fulfill a specific mission. In our tradition, he's a messenger of God and he comes back to kill the Antichrist. That's our belief is about Jesus the Messiah. Is the Messiah? According to the definition I just gave, yes. Okay. To my, our definition, Islamic All right. definition. Okay, so you're saying that the Quran is a book about God, therefore it, it wouldn't include uh, detailed information about the Messiah about the prophets. However, the, the, the Quran... I didn't say that. What, what are you saying? Then? I said it shouldn't holistically be talking about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when I interrupt you, with all due respect, is to just correct what you say because sometimes you misrepresent me. That's why I interrupt you. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a problem what you said if the account was consistent, right? So, for example, when we Christians go out and evangelize, we give out the books of John's, right? That's only one book of the Bible. Why do we do that? Because it tells you very clearly that Jesus Christ is Lord, it tells you how to get saved. We don't have to give the whole Bible when we need to share. However, that is okay because it's part of the Bible and because it's consistent. Now, the problem in the Quran is that you have not only a different Jesus, different prophets, you have shorter versions and they're distorted and they're written hundreds of years later right that shows just itself logically that is false if you if, if there is a story whoa whoa whoa, whoa 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 you're teaching me now that's not a question i'm not teaching no 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 you no 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 you were just teaching me that's no 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 you you just said you just you just it doesn't make sense to anyone. again you're not talking to me right because are you here to entertain people or something is that your your, your daily job I'm, I'm here to have a serious co right. discussion about salvation not to entertain people right? right now you're teaching me because you're saying it's doing x y and z and that is wrong and that is false this is called teaching right so if you have a question for me i'm happy to hear your question but i'm not here to be taught by a woman if her own scripture tells me that she shouldn't be teaching other women muslim women i'm happy to be to be taught okay. well first of all the just clarifying right. the the, the, uh, yeah first of all so is he talking to me or are you talking okay. to me first of all right? just talk amongst yourself if he's going to talk to me or you're going to talk to me okay first of all yes the, the scripture about um women not teaching right so are you going to teach me that that no, scripture I'm not, means I'm this or that very fine. no 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 you should be asking questions you said you're here to ask questions okay right we're done talking about the bible i've just debunked islam i've just proven to you that an account written a few hundred years later which is shorter and this story is false that's why this guy doesn't want me to talk now we're going to talk about this i know you talk and you're going to ask that's not true. questions you said i can't talk i can't teach you so i won't i won't teach anymore i'm just debunked you do you realize by saying I debunked you does not make it true? Do you know that? The part, well, you know, we do you know that? Do you, do you yeah. know that? We okay, it's good you know decide. that. I just was we making sure. You decide. Do you agree in an account written? Again, are you talking to me or are you talking to someone else? Are we? So are you can we, ask me any question if you want to ask right, me. That's fine. We're going Go to ahead. move on to the Quran now because you don't want to talk about it. No, I can talk about anything. I've just debunked you. Okay. No problem. If that's I what you know believe, that. I've debunked you. No and problem. Know that. You can. You can. You are entitled the, to your opinion. The, the account of the of Jesus Christ in the Quran is false. And it's why is that? Shorted, it's shorter. Can you prove that? I've proven it to you. How did you do that? By saying it? There is logic, right? Okay. Right. Logic proves. Uh, 
profits. Even the profits, yeah? Even the profits. I had uh, one of your colleagues, he's on Sam Dawa's channel. I don't have actually. colleagues. Which co okay, colleagues are you talking Dawa about? Do you come to my workplace or something? <laughs> what colleagues are you talking about? Dawa colleagues. No, they, you can say brothers in faith, which okay. are two billion people, so you have to be specific. Even your brothers in faith a couple of months ago, right? You tried to say to me... I'm not here to defend other people's statements. Again, are you talking to me or are you talking to someone okay, else? Can I say something politely? Just Go ahead. prove my point. Thank you very much. So, mm. even uh, this guy, Speaker's Corner, he tried to say that, oh, uh, the Pharaoh is king, blah, blah, blah. We uh, we have but we have it written as king in the Quran. Huh? No, I'm not talking about yes, him. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the Quran. I'm not talking about him. Can you beat him up, please? Right. I'm not, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about... The You're talking to me. Don't, okay. don't worry about him. Okay. So, even uh, even uh, this Muslim man, and I'm not talking about him because we're not going to make it personal, he said that, oh, in the Quran it calls um, uh, the Pharaoh king and oh, is a king. But actually, the, the account in the Quran of Joseph is one chapter. One chapter and we have pages is it, is it this, big? this big we have pages in the you know and now you're trying to say to me that the account in the Quran is more valid in terms of the prophets when the accounts are shorter they are distorted written hundreds of years later 13. you can go you can go 15 chapters of Joseph and you have one chapter and you say the cha the chapter that relax, we have is relax a little bit relax, relax don't worry yes. relax a little bit okay you, so you can angry? go that you can I don't know we, no, no. I don't so know angry? why she is but, but look, 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 look you, upset. talk to me please though, the, my brother just allow me to talk to sorry you can go you can go to the person who told you that and discuss with him I don't know what you're telling me about how many chapters do you from what you know but do you understand what I've just said right I've not made any claims about Joseph uh, that's called the straw man right I did not make any claims about Joseph so if you have an issue with someone else who made a claim about no, Joseph I, you can go if you allow me just I allowed you to speak you can go to that person and you can explain to him but I don't know that's not that's irrelevant trying to, to practice her English I talk oh okay no problem right I'm not I'm not I will uh, clarify I'm not making a person up to here I don't like to make things personal I don't like to be disrespectful that's why I don't even talk about Muhammad because I don't even want to go there However, talking purely in terms of theology, right, we have one chapter of Joseph in the Quran and 13 chapters in the Bible. Now, you as a Muslim tell me, how can a, a Quran written hundreds of years later with one chapter be more valid and more reliable than the Bible written thousands of years before with a more extensive content? Can I answer? Yeah. One is from God and the other is corrupted. Like, there is no proof of corruption. Done, I've answered your we question. Have, no. You have a new question now. Right. As I said, you're, you're not here to teach me. You're not here to teach me, you're here to ask me questions. Okay. So if you have a question about what I said, you can then clarify, this is my question, I'm happy to answer you. Okay. Yeah. So you, you just be careful because I think that you guys are in front of the camera, yeah? You just allow the camera to... to if you interrupt politely, you can listen, but it's, it's you know, Sisters, please allow her, allow, allow me to speak to her, please. please. Okay, can you talk to me now? Can you take can, can you talk to me? Okay. Let's talk. Sisters, sisters, please, sisters, sisters, look, the Prophet Alay sister. Sisters. 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 Look. Yeah, please talk to her, sister. Come, look, talk to me. Yeah. By the way, by the way, I don't condone this behavior. This is not a good Muslim behavior. I'm I'm very clear on that, yeah. Thank you, because you know. Um, we can agree to disagree and we can discuss, but I don't like abusive behavior. Of course, I agree with you. Okay. Sure. So, I, agree okay. I agree with you. Okay, let's, let's, can we focus on our discussion? Yeah. Because when you talk to someone, then they feel like you're talking to them. They yeah, it's just very difficult when you're being abused, you know. It's like, well, okay, but, yeah. no problem. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so, by the way, uh, let me say something very important, right? If you cannot handle the pressure, you shouldn't be doing this. I can handle... So if, you, if you're going to start, if you feel like you're going to start to cry my advice to you is that this is not something you should be doing right I'm not if you do not I'm just giving you advice I'm giving you advice right if you can handle yourself you can engage with other people and you, you're not feeling stressed because I feel like you you're a bit feeling stressed or you're about to cry or something like that if this is the case if this is the case then my my advice a sincere advice for you because I'm, I'm worried about your safety you shouldn't be doing this if you're afraid no I just why do you take my advice do you laugh at my advice I'm giving you sincere advice I'm, uh, I'm just thank you for you guys please because it gets too much when people
people are talking. We're having a they are your friends if you allow them to. Okay. So um, I um, I can handle the pressure. What I don't like is abuse. Okay. But it's finished now. We can go back to the. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I told okay. you I don't condone that we behavior. I was very clear. Thank you very much. No problem. I, I appreciate you. No problem. See that no problem. it was not okay. Now. Why is your next question? So when we. So my question is right. Yes. So you say that okay. The claim is that the Quran is corrupt. Uh, the Bible was corrupt. So therefore. The Quran comes now. Even so, how can a, a Quran be truthful when it only has one, like very small um, verses, chapters here and there that are changed? It doesn't make sense. How can, how the stories. Can it how can it be truthful when it's reduced, when it's confusing, when it's um, twisted? How can it be truth? So let me get this clear. If something is clear, if something is short, that means it's not true. Is that your reasoning? Well, in this circumstance, yes, right? Let's say. So let's my answer to that question would be that we don't mm -hmm. base truth based on how big or, or small something is. That's my answer mm -hmm. to your question. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's a kind of a fact. Let's say that, you know, you spend a day in here, right? And I write a story of what you've done from the morning till night time today. Now, um, I send that story to different towns, you know, and uh, there is no computer, no internet. People write the story. And. Uh, 99% is the same, right? So over hundreds of years, there are people all around the world and they have the same story. There might be some words different, there might be some sentence that change, but the content is the same. Now, you then um, come 700 years later and somebody comes and he says, no, uh, what you did on that day, we reduced it to one paragraph and that is true, even though it's completely different from all the other accounts that were circulated, but in mind there is no internet. How can that be reliable? It's not reliable in your story, but your story is not in accordance to what we believe. Mm. Absolutely it's not, and I'm glad that we agree. You understand that, what I was Yeah, I am when glad. I say, let me clarify because it seems that you misunderstood. That story that you concocted right now, you just you made up in your mind, does not represent the reality or the comparison between the Quran and the Bible. Absolutely, because... Sure. Um, so it, it's, because it's a false comparison. No, it, it, it is a, a true comparison, right? Because you just said absolutely. I mean, yeah, because okay, we, no we don't believe in the same God. So I'm happy that we can agree. We don't believe in the That's same way I'm of saying. salvation. That's not okay? what I'm so I, Are you teaching me that? No, I'm just stating to you the so fact. You telling me something? Are you teaching me? There is no need to be patronizing. I'm not patronizing. Your book tells you not to teach, not my book. Do you understand the, the context? That. Do you understand the context? Is that a question? Yes. Context of what? Of what it says for a woman not to teach. Do you understand the context? I, uh, I think it's clear. It doesn't need any explanation. It's okay. very clear. Anyone okay. can go to the Bible, read uh, mm. First uh, Timothy chapter 3. Verse 11 onwards, and you can read what the Bible teaches. Okay. You don't need to take my opinion of okay. what I think what it says. Yeah. Just read it for it's, what it is. Uh, okay, let's clarify. So no, no, clarifying is teaching. No, so no, no. Because unless you have a question, you I, can ask you a question. Okay, let's talk about the Quran. If you're not going to let me clarify the but Bible. You're talking about the Quran. If you, you're because. Talking about the Quran. Okay. You're talking so about Joseph if, and the Quran. Okay. So if you don't want me to explain that, for example, Jesus told the Samaritan woman to go and tell, Jesus told Mary Magdalene to go and tell, and that is evangelism. That is, if everybody's called to evangelize, that's fine. Teaching, I didn't say it's not fine. teaching is is different, right? In a church, there should be a man pastor. Can you define man the should two teach words? Men. Can you define the two words? What two words? What the, can you define teaching? It depends on one context. Well, me, on your context, context. Argue, I just I mean, need one of the Quran. Yeah, yeah, of course, my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you define teaching? Can you define teaching? Are you talking okay. to him or me? Uh, can you the, define teaching? Okay. Teaching is um, teaching the Bible. It teaching would be more teaching. Teaching, can you teaching, teaching, no teaching is uh, to pass the knowledge on to somebody. Excellent. So, were you passing knowledge on to me a few minutes ago about you know, the Bible? It, is, is, uh, it depends on the context. If I'm evangelizing, you're lost. You're not in Christ. You're going to hell. I have a duty you teach, you to tell teach. you. I have a duty to tell every human being about how to get saved. I don't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want to now. You don't want me to talk about the Bible. Let's talk about the Quran I mean, because look, I have something to you ask you about the Quran. Right now, what you're doing right now, and it's very obvious and clear, right? To claim that I don't want you to talk about something when I never made that claim is obvious. I never told you don't teach this. When I did, wait, wait. Okay. 
I did never said do not talk about this or do not talk about that. You were talking yes. about the Bible, you were talking about the Quran. I, were, I was answering your question. So don't try to build a straw man that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Please, because it's, it, looks, I, it, looks, it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Okay, when I debunked yeah. Islam, you told me that women are not allowed to teach. So now let's move on to the Quran. Yeah, well, you debunked Islam in your mind. Yes. Okay, yes. my Christian friends agree. The audience can decide. Of course, your Christian themselves. friends agree. Of course, the you audience do. can decide for of themselves. Course you do, do you way. believe an account that is detailed, was written over thousands of years? Are you repeating the same Bibles, question again? Yes, all the Bibles agree that Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And um, there is a one there is different word in use, the same context. Do you want to believe that story that has been consistent over thousands of years, or a story written by a man who was a big sinner, who heard a revelation from an angel? Two minutes ago, you said you want to talk about Prophet Muhammad. You're just showing your hypocrisy by trying to, to throw this low blow about Prophet Muhammad, right? It just shows your Christian hypocrisy. A minute ago, you say, I don't want to be like those other people that talk about the Prophet and this and that. Two minutes later, she starts insulting the Prophet of Islam. Even though I was very respectful from the beginning of the conversation, I didn't talk about Jesus. I did not insult him in any way, shape or form. It just shows the difference between you and me. Second thing, what do I want to believe? I believe in the Quran. And I believe in the Bible. Now let's talk about but the Quran. But you're coming to me. I'm well, not coming to you. Let's talk about the Quran. Yeah. Let's do this. You asked the same question four times. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't have other questions. That's why she no, has to repeat the question. We move on to the move Quran on. now. Right. Okay. We were so, talking about the Quran. Joseph, okay. The chapter of Joseph was in the Quran. Okay. Last and we, we, did, we debunked how one little, the, one little chapter written hundreds of years later is less Are you going to move on or are you going to talk about but something? You mentioned, okay, we'll move on. We'll move on to the Quran. So now you tell me. How do you get saved in Can Islam? Can you tell me? It's better than now you tell me. It's, it's right. a bit condescending behavior, don't you agree? I didn't say you should tell me this or that. You say, Can you, you tell me? If, you, if you're coming to, coming to ask a question, no, you're doing that, not me. If you're coming to ask a question, then there is a mannerism of asking questions. Can you answer this question or can you clarify this point for me? That's okay. what I'm used to. This is what my Muslim brothers come and do, right? Okay. Even though they, they could be better than me in the sight of God, but oh, they're sorry, very respectful. You're so sensitive. They're, they're very oh, respectful. All of a sudden, very, you're sensitive. They're very respectful. Wow. And when they come, telling they ask a question. Cry. Don't cry, bro. Politely, Stop and crying. I give them an answer. Stop crying. Could you kindly clarify? Stop crying. Why is he crying? Could you kindly clarify? Stop it. Tell him not to cry. It's just a How do you get saved in Islam? How do I get saved in Islam? By following the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet of Islam. Okay. Could you, guys, um, could you, I need to get my bank charge, so that's why I'll be one minute. So now, could you kindly. Okay, get, get what you like, there's no problem. But we're going to wrap up soon because we've been already now almost. Because I don't know. I'm gonna get to the source, the juicy bit of the Quran. We've been, we've been, we've been talk talking, we've been talking, talk we've been talking for 45 minutes. I will allow okay. you to ask whatever you like, right? All right let's but we should wrap up. That's what I'm saying. Okay, right? let's let's finish talking about. And again, this. again, you, the petty behavior of trying to make it seem like I'm trying to you avoid something. Stop complaining. Clear, right? Right. Right. Are you just but complaining? Let's get straight to the juicy point, eh? Hey? So right. Let's talk I about. Cry, baby. Is that how women speak in Christianity? Stop cry, baby. Go ahead. Don't be a cry, baby. Go ahead. Let's talk That's about. It's very strange. Not complaining. Let's get straight to the point. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. He's not complaining. All right, thank you very much for your input. Let's talk about Quran 2570, where it says, Except for those who repent, believe in the righteous works, for them Allah will replace the evil deeds with good, and ever is Allah forgiven and merciful. Now, what are you fighting at the scripture? You? I, I, you were reading very quickly and screaming. Okay. Can you take, uh, take do it again? Time? Do it again. So okay, I I'll read a story so everybody can get Please. a full understanding. Please do. Quran 2570, okay. except for those who repent, believe and do righteous work for them, Allah will, and here it comes the interesting bit, will replace their evil deeds with good and ever is Allah forgiven and merciful. Now, what does that mean? It means what it says, it's in clear English. Okay, could you break it down in more details and then I can tell you what it comes across to me. The, it says that when you believe in Allah Azza wa and you repent to the Creator, Allah Azza wa replace, replaces the evil deeds that you used to do with good deeds. Now the scholars have many explanations for this verse. One of them which is very uh, popular is that for example I used to kill, which is a bad deed I used to do, right? It's a hypothetical example, it's not me, yeah? Okay? So hypothetically a person used to kill and then Allah replaces, replaces that bad deed that he used to do with, for example, giving charity. So now Allah replaced him a good deed that he does in the place of the bad deed that he used to do. That's one example. 
Okay, it's very interesting that you said how different scholars have different interpretations because yeah. I found in a hadith that actually says that your sins will be turned into rewards, which is actually, um, you know, what it says. Okay, where is the hadith? So let's read the hadith. Can you give so it to we, me in Arabic, yeah. please? I don't, uh, how comes uh, Islam can only be understood in Arabic? Surely God is a... Who said that? Is that well, you, why are you asking me to read it because, in Arabic? Because I'm, an Ar because I'm an Arabic speaker. But isn't, isn't God a man of all languages? Languages, God is not a man. Arabic? God is not a man. Okay, isn't According to the God Bible. all languages? God is not a man. I'll rephrase it. Isn't God oh, yeah, all languages? Arabic God. Or is it only the Arabic? Is it? is it only Arabic? Are you asking the question to yes. them or to me? I'm asking why. Because you're looking why? around, I don't I'm know asking, why. You speak very good English, right? Okay, yeah, I do. Um, Alhamdulillah, so thank so you. That's we... it's a good, it's a good okay. compliment. It's the first so time we get that Yes, go ahead. Why do we have to okay. read in Arabic? We're in England. I didn't say you have to. We're speaking in English. Why I, do we I have didn't to say you have to. I said you give the Arabic for me because I can read the original. Why would I read the translation of the original if I can access exactly. the original? Okay, I'm gonna. Did you get what I just said? Yes. Can you tell me what I just said? Okay. You said to me that you're yes. an Arabic speaker, so you wanna read it in Arabic. But yes. we're you wanna. Uh, what is the problem in that? I said wh why should no why wouldn't I read the original and I read the translation of the original? Are you worried that it's Translation is wrong. Can be wrong, of course. Right. Depending right. on which yeah. website you're bringing the translation from. Exactly. So you ha I want you to give me the, the hadith in the, in the original language in which I can read. Okay. Alhamdulillah, I don't it have a problem. A, it has both languages. I'm going to read it and then I'm going to show you in Arabic, no right? Problem. Take your time. So give me two minutes to read it. Um, yes. From Safiya Ibn Katib. I know who the last person who will be brought forth from hell and the last person who will enter paradise. A man will be brought it will be said excuse me um, take him his major sins and ask him about his minor sins so it will be said to him on such and such a day you did such and such and on such and such a day you did such and such he will say yes and he will not be able to deny anything so so far so good in a sense there is nothing wrong here however in here it says then it will be said to him for every deed now you have good merit. He will say, Oh Lord, I did things that I do not see here. He, Abu Dha, said, and the messenger of Allah smiled so broadly that his mollusks could be seen. Muslim recorded, Ibi Abi recorded that Abu Bajir heard Mansu say, A very old man with sunken eyes came and said, Oh messenger of Allah, a man betrayed others and did immoral deeds, and there was no evil deed which he did not do. If his sins were to be distributed among the whole of mankind, they would all be doomed. Is there any repentance for him? The messenger of Allah said, Have you become Muslim? He said, That's for me, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, with no part or associate. And the messenger, Muhammad is the seventh messenger. Um, I'm Muslim. Why? Right. <laughs> but here it comes, the twisted bit. Allah will right forgive now. you for whatever you've done like that. And he will praise your evil deed with good merits. I'm really waiting for the point. Can I read the hadith that now in Arabic? That is the point. Can that I, is the point. Can I read in Arabic now? You said you have the Arabic as well. Yeah. The point is very clear. In the Quran and in the hadith, it says. Can I read the hadith clearly. before you state the point says, that you're trying to, to state? Okay. Where is the hadith? It's here. I can get the website yeah, yeah, if you want it. Yeah, no, give me the hadith because, because this is just. Uh, yeah, Are you saying that this is not true? This is verses. Of, I'm not really making any claims. I'm asking you to give me the Arabic so I can read it in the original text. Okay. Yeah, I'll go to sunnah.com or any of the other websites and just put the hadith there. I'm gonna get it up one minute. Please do, yeah. Take your time. I don't know why we have a big crowd today. Not all the hadith. She just asked why does Allah give forgiveness? Why is Allah giving forgiveness? That's what she's asking. That's the question. At least read the hadith. She has a point she wants to make. At least read the hadith. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why because I heard Ali Dawa and Muhammad Ijab. Can we can we stick with my discussion with you again? Other people are not responsible for what they say, for what they do. I'm not their 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 guardian. Yeah, right. This is the Arabic, and it starts from here. Okay, the can I let me read the Arabic? Let me read okay. Okay. Sorry. Inilah Arabic. Can let me let me read. Okay. 
Okay, where is the uh, where is the the hadith in which book? Because I don't see any references there. Okay, now he's gonna deny it because there is no. It's here in Arabic. I can't. I just asked Arabic. you where is the hadith. Okay. I didn't Let's, make a I didn't okay. make a claim right. that I'm denying it's it or not denying it. It's in here. Okay, let's 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 accept the hadith. Right, it's Surah 25, Al-Fura, Ayat 28. How is the Surah and it's a hadith? It's right. It says it in here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because it's the beginning. Okay. Where is the hadith? Where is the hadith? It's in here. 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 It's in
I misrepresent the Quran. Does Allah say in the Quran? Wait. Does Allah say in the Quran you will get more reward? Show me where, where okay. does Allah say that. What it says. Please don't skip the question. Okay, I'm me. answering. What it's saying, right, is that your sins will be turned into more rewards. Now, let's where, where, logic. where does it say more let's rewards? Let's it again. Okay. Let me answer. Mm -hmm. I know it in Arabic. Okay. There is nothing about more. Right. This is exactly. something you introduced. Yeah, and I in tell order, you why. In order, in order for you to to corrupt the Quran, try to corrupt the verse of the Quran, no. like you corrupt your own scriptures, right? But in us, alhamdulillah, we memorize our Quran. I know it says word for word and letter for letter. Yeah. I don't need you to try and add something from your pocket to portray some beliefs that you have, right? It does not say you will have more rewards. Yeah. It just says that Allah will replace your bad deeds with good deeds. Okay. And I give you an example right. of what scholars say by replacing bad deeds with good deeds. Now you went to the Bible and the Bible says this and that and you explain, explain to me why is it unjust. Again, I said to you, Allah Azza wa can recompense the people who died. Allah Azza wa can do that. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he can give you anything you want. To, uh, you want. So if I did injustice to someone, and Allah recompense him on the day of judgment, what is the problem in that? Right. First of all, there is no justice because again, you're um, just repeating. Can go I ahead. please answer? Thank you very much. Go ahead. Right. So I, I'll go back to the first point because you made a few points, and we're going to pick this. You said, where does it say that you get more? Logically, if your sins become rewards, the more sins you commit, the more rewards you get. This is the logic. That's what it says. Because that's what it says in Quran. Don't, don't worry. She, people see clearly. It's not saying that. She's just making. Stuff. Now, you're saying to me, where is the justice? The problem with this is that if, I, if I'm a Christian, is Allah going to recompensate me if you kill my no, brother? No, no, no. Of course If you die not. as a Christian, you go to hellfire. Well, exactly. You burn, so there you is burn no there. justice. In Christianity, however, there is justice. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Of course, Jesus if you know the, the truth and you reject it, then you die. And the Bible recognizes that we're all evil and only God is good. This is Sorry, don't the include me with you. If you're evil, don't include me. Do you think you're a good person? As much as I can, yeah. Well, the, the truth is, you're not Your good, truth, yeah. I'm not good, is what the Bible says. The Bible recognizes I'm not that interested we're all in what sinners. the Bible says. Why we're should I care? Sinners. We can, you should care. Why? Because it's the way to salvation. That's your belief, I don't you believe it. That's what the Bible you says. You will die in your sins. Again, you're imposing your beliefs. You. I was just telling you in the beginning, you're trying to impose your beliefs. I'm not interested in what the Bible says. You're coming okay. to me here, but I'm not interested. So, the, to wrap this up. I believe in my book, which is right. a Quran. To wrap this up, in Islam, you're saved by your deeds. Right? I didn't say that. It says that you, is there a scale at Judgment Day in Islam? Is there a scale? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What is the scale about? Can you explain it? The scale is about weighing the good deeds and the bad deeds. So, <laughs> so wait, did you not just say that you, there is no... Yes, I said that. So, yes, I said so that. Are, so if you don't understand that concept, you can ask, okay. ask me and I will explain. All right. But you so, clearly don't understand what you're talking about. Right. So in Islam, you are, your, your deeds and your, your sins are put on a scale. Yes. Okay. Now, let's, let's unpack this. That doesn't mean you just let's enter paradise because of that. That's your, your understanding, which is flawed. So what's the we have a clear of the scales? Now let me teach you, I'll answer your question. Mm -hmm. It's a clear hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Of a person who lived all his life, 70 years, obeying Allah and doing good deeds. And then his deeds were placed on the scale. And then Allah said, let him enter paradise with my mercy. He said, no, Allah, I'm not going to enter with your mercy. I will enter with my deeds, which is your understanding or the Christian understanding of Islam. And then, if you can you allow me to finish, you see? All right. Now you see, because you don't want to hear the hadith, do you, right? So then, so then he says, no, I enter with my deeds. I don't enter with your mercy. So then Allah says, bring the, the blessing of the eyesight that I have bestowed upon him. And then when the blessing of the eyesight is put, put on the scale, all his deeds are gone. They, they were all lifted up. So then he said, no, 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 oh Allah, I go to paradise with your mercy. So the Prophet ﷺ told us, Clearly, he said, none of you will enter paradise with his deeds. They said, even you, O Prophet of Allah, he said, even me. So if the Prophet of Allah is not entering with his deeds, none of us are entering with, with their deeds. Just because there is scale does not mean this is how we enter. It does not mean this is how we enter paradise. We enter paradise with the mercy of Allah. But one condition to obtain the mercy of Allah is to do as much as good as you can in this life. Exactly. Which is where the scale comes in. Now, this is your answer. Did you hear that? Yeah, you know, I'm sure. And you can talk to me. You can talk. 
talks to right, me. I'm talking. Okay. I'm not worried about him. He, talk, he interrupts all the time, but I talk to you. Okay. Right. No, no, don't feel defeated. You can speak. I don't. I've already defined him, Islam. No, I've already defined him. That's so why are you still here? So why are you still here? We're going to wrap this up. Why are you still here? We're going to wrap this up. If you, if you debunk Islam, why are you still here? Why are you still here? You debunk Islam 30 minutes ago. Why are you still here? We, I wanted to ask you okay, some questions. Go ahead. We're yes. going to wrap this up. No so essentially, yes. in Islam, right, you'll say, um, if you follow, do you know if you're going to heaven, for example? Do you if know I die that? as a Muslim, I go to heaven, yes. Allah, die, promised, so, me. What, what, Allah promised me I go to okay, paradise. So what is the purpose of the scales? Can we get the hadith about I've already scales? answered that. I'm, 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 I'm not, uh, I don't, I'm not I'm of the habit of repeating myself. I'm not understanding because I'm not you watch understanding. The footage. You watch the footage. I'm not you understanding. understand. I'm not understanding how your, your sins turn into rewards. I don't understand Can that Can I explain? You know, you, said there are different you know, in the university... In uni I know there are different... Do you want me to answer you? In the university, when the professor is explaining something and someone says, I don't understand, then the, the professor repeats the same point again, right? You have the footage, go home, watch it 10 yeah, times, and you'll understand why. Nice answer, nice answer. Well, that's I'm going to get it up. I'm going to get it up then because you don't want to be... Uh, Polite. I don't um, want to be polite. How am I not being polite? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay, you're defeated, man. Please just, just take the L. Right. According to the verse of the Quran, that's why she's here. She doesn't want to leave. She feels defeated. You, know? you, okay. you don't want to listen. Yeah, it can be concluded that in Quran, a scale would be established in order to weigh the good and bad deeds of people. Where enough gains is an Islamic principle is part of accounting. Now, the problem is that the problem with this is that if your sins, where did you get that from? Right. Um, <laughs> I got it online, obviously. You got it online from Google again, well, yeah? Can you tell me which... No so you show uh, You me, like Google a lot, right? So you show me, you are the Islamic scholar. I didn't you, say I'm an Islamic scholar. Okay. Where did I say that? The, you're the Islamic teacher. I didn't say I was the Islamic so teacher. What are you? I'm just a Muslim, that's can it. Can you recite the Quran? I'm the servant of Allah, can that's what I am. Can you recite the Quran? I can recite the Quran. So, so what's... So, uh, Every Muslim can recite the Quran. How many Muslims can recite the Quran? Everyone, mashallah. Everyone can recite the Quran. So what's the point? Are you just a parrot then? Just remembering but not understanding. Now, now it shows who, who's not being polite. I didn't call you a parrot. I did not insult you. But you're 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 using ad hominem because you know because you know your argument doesn't work. Now you're trying to use ad hominem, right? You can talk to him then, and you can guys go have a cup of tea what? or so coffee. Can I ask you I don't know you are here for me. What's the point of you memorizing the Quran if you don't understand it or teach or can't teach it? What's the I never point? said that. I never that said, I never said that. I said it's parity, not to call you a parrot. But that's what a parrot You already did, by the way. But that's what parrots do. The parrots memorize sure. things. I, you and can they don't insult know what all you like. This is what Christianity so teaches. What's the difference? I have to be respectful. So, politely, what's the difference between a parrot and somebody learning a book and not understanding what it says? Is that this is a human being and this is not a human being. Yeah, but what is the point of view? What is one is a human, one is an animal. Okay, but, so they're not equal. but they don't understand. Both of them don't understand what it says. Okay. I never made the claim that we don't understand what the Quran says. No, so can I made the claim that I don't call myself an Islamic scholar, okay. nor do I call myself an Islamic teacher. So are you are listening you, to him or me? Right. Are you? What is the point? Can you show me what it says about the scale, please? I'll ask you again. Because you. Oh. There are many, many. You have to be more specific. There are many verses in the Quran, like Allah says, "Wa nadhar al mawazin al khista li yom al qiyam," and we place the scales, the just scales, on the day of judgment. There are many verses in the Quran. There are many ahadith. The Prophet ﷺ okay. said there would be a scale that would be placed and the good that the bad deeds will be placed there. There are many different okay. traditions and narrations let's that don't come this, about. Let's, let's put this straight. Can right. you let her speak? Have some respect for her. Yes. Let, let's get this straight. It should be the cameraman, not the speaking man. Yeah? Sure, right. Yeah. right, let's like get this. We, we have a lot of people uh, jumping in. Let's get this straight, right? So you have a scales on Judgment Day where your deeds and your sins will be weighted. Do you want to finish here? Right? Because you said they already disproved Islam. Do you want to finish here? Yeah, I want to say, yes. but as I Open. showed you, in Islam, according to the Quran, Run, it tells you that the sins turn into good deeds. So that means, so that means that on the day of judgment, if you killed a hundred people, those. 
sins will be on the scale of good deeds. Therefore, they will make you more righteous. So Allah may be merciful, but he is not just because you have more justice with more sins than somebody. Because it's very important. That's your understanding. It's very important. My brother, my brother, wait. My brother, wait, wait. Now to answer you, do you want to talk to me or no? Right. Now to answer your question, that's your understanding, your flawed understanding. We don't agree with but it. You agree but thank you, thank you for telling us. But we don't agree you with it. You agree that there are different interpretations. You said in the very beginning, and what different of interpretation to what? Of this verse. Yes, I did say that. Yeah. Okay, and you agree. But what you said is not one of them. This is I've I've, I've shown you in the hadith. You didn't show me anything. You, you don't have a number for the hadith you quoted. You don't know what, any references. You say Google is your reference. That's all you showed me so far. Come with the book. Uh, I showed you. Next I showed you the website. Oh, okay, okay. I showed you the website. I don't think there's a next time. Man. I think that's it. Because <laughs> the hadith really states really that she I have to She already did this proof, Islam, man. Why, why did she have to go like that? Listen. Yeah, bring some proof. Bring some proof. Uh, All right, listen, can, uh, you know, you know, you know what's funny. What's really funny? What's really funny? And, and let's end with this, right? What's really funny is that you called me a parrot, and you continue to repeat yourself for 30 minutes in this conversation, right? So I don't know which which one of us is a parrot. Now, do you do you wanna do you wanna end this discussion? You know, it was nice talking to you. Now you guys came here many times. I was not here. You came here many times trying to find me. Here we had our discussion. I'm not interested to have any discussions with you anymore. You believe you already? Oh, you already believe? You already believe? You, you, already, you already, bro, don't, don't worry, don't worry about her. You already believe you debunk Islam, so you shouldn't be interested in coming back in again, unless you feel, unless you feel you didn't debunk Islam. But that's a different story. If you did, then it's, it's done. We don't need to have this discussion anymore. There are many sincere people who are interested to hear in Islam. I didn't come to your table. I'm not interested in what you're preaching. I have my Quran. I know it's from the truth. I know it's from God. I don't need your approval. I don't need your acceptance. You can take yourself and go. Thank you, guys. As you guys can see, Muslim Lantern was just so brutally dishonest and committing to Kia all throughout the video. I really apologize that you guys had to watch that hour long video of him just getting completely humiliated by not only his dishonesty, but his lack of knowledge on his own belief system. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on Suda 434 because it this seemed like he was being very sexist towards her. And on top of that, it seemed like he created a false double standard. Apparently, Jesus is sexist, but Muhammad in the Quran isn't. Very false double standard. Whenever we go to Suda 434, and this is on Korean.com, so it's a very accurate, accredited translation by your false Islamic scholars, they tell us this, men, Let's so let's go to Sahih International because this is the most popular one and it's about women being able to get beat by their husbands. It says it very very clearly in your false Quran. Okay? So whenever you go ahead and go to uh Surah 434, it says that men are caretakers of women since Allah has made some of them excel the others and because of the wealth they have spent so the righteous women are, are obedient and guard the property in honor of their husbands and their absence with the protection given by Allah as for women of whom you fear rebellion convince them and leave them apart in beds and beat them then if they obey you do not seek a way against them surely Allah is the highest and the greatest and if you actually go to the original Arabic it actually is a lot more brutal than that it says to strike your wives to beat them forsake them in bed if they disobey you until you get your way now that is the truth of Islam however when you go to the Word of God scripture tells us that we must love our wives so much that we're willing to put our lives at the line for our wives because we love our wives that much that is the difference between islam and christianity and islam it puts the husband first in this very over possessive dominant abusive role where you're allowed to strike and hit your wife until she gives you the results you want and you can also go ahead and abandon your wife in bed not give her any sexual desire or attention as long as you wish to until she gives you what you want from her versus in the bible it teaches both husbands and wives to submit ourselves unto each other to love each other to submit unto each other as we both submit unto jesus christ 
So that's the difference, again, between a marriage and, and the Islamic worldview versus the Christian worldview. And this is me going directly to the source, not people's man-made traditions or beliefs. And then whenever you see the hypocrisy in Islam, it's really interesting because literally the very first Christian and one of the first evangelists throughout the whole word of God is Mary Magdalene. And upon Mary Magdalene, there's many other Christians that were women in the word of God who were evangelists. So like that verse that he was trying to take out of context that women should not teach and this and that, it just means that women should not be in those roles such as women pastors, for example, asserting their dominance and asserting authority over a male congregation. That is very unbiblical and I'm not afraid to say so. However, it is biblical for women to be able to share the gospel in truth. And this could be evangelism. This could be sharing the gospel to non-believers. This could be children's ministry. This could be sharing unto other women, things of that nature. So I think context is very important when it comes to this. But whenever you see the Quran, it also tells you to strike your wife. And it says that two or three women are equal to one man. Why? Because women are more likely to be dishonest according to the Quran. It says it. So whenever there's any legal proceedings in Sharia law, there has to be three witnesses that are women equal to one man. And even then, the one man is taken as more reliable and authentic as a source of truth than the three women themselves because they think that men are superior to women. Now, again, like I said, it does get a lot worse. Because if we actually look in the Hadith and Sahih al-Bukhari, which is literally the most prominent, most popular, most authentic Hadith out there, all Muslim scholars agree that it is authentic, okay? So whenever we go to Sahih al-Bukhari 5825, it states, Ikrimah Rifia divorced his wife whereupon Abdur Rahman bin Azotobar Al Kurazi married her. Aisha said that the lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her, Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of ladies to support each other, so when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not yet seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. Look, her skin is greedier than her clothes. When Abdur Rahman heard that his wife had gone to the Prophet, he came with his two sons from another wife. She said, By Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he is impotent and is as useless to me as this. Holding and showing the fringe of her garment, Abdur Rahman said, By Allah, O Allah's Messenger, she had told a lie. I am very strong and can satisfy her, but she is disobedient and wants to go back to her Rafia. Allah's messenger said to her, If that is your intention, then know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rafia unless Abdur Rahman has had sexual intercourse with you. Then the Prophet saw two boys with Abdur Rahman and asked him, Are these your sons? On that, Abdur Rahman said, Yes. The Prophet said, You claim what you claim. But by Allah, these boys resemble him as a crow resembles a crow. Whatever the heck that means. But anyways, the point that we can get from this passage is the fact that a woman was beaten by her husband so harshly and disgustingly and vilely that she actually began to become green. Not blue, not purple, not red, but green. And if you guys aren't aware, green is a mixture of all of those colors. And I'm not saying this to be funny, it is very disgusting and it's very sad that something like this can be seen as holy. A woman, a woman guys, a woman was beaten by a man aggressively until her skin was green. So badly that must have hurt her. That is so sad and I feel bad for this woman. Even though she's no longer alive, it's still a very sad thing because this resembles the rest of Islam till this day. They still allow woman beating. It's a common practice throughout Islam. And Muhammad blamed her for getting beaten because she did not obey her husband. Or she said, or he said that she has to have sexual intercourse with her husband to gain her favor so that he doesn't beat her anymore after the husband is having sexual intercourse with other women. That is a very sad, pathetic belief. And now the craziest part about it is, guys, is it gets a lot worse. Why? Because whenever you look at their texts, it also tells you that they're able to commit polygamy, which basically means that if I have enough money, the more wives I can marry. 
Now, what's the big issue with this? The big reason why I think it's a huge issue is because it's literally adultery and fornication with marriage as a sense, as a cover up to appear as a sense of false humility and false holiness. What's the difference between a secular person increasing their body count, having sexual interactions with multiple people and a Muslim in a polygamous relationship? There is no difference except the Muslim is forced to be in multiple marriages because the religion says so. Other than that, they're literally just like any worldly person. There is literally no difference, guys. It's a false sense of humility in Islam. And then something that we commonly notice that Muslim Lancer was trying to use throughout the whole debate is this term called whataboutism. Now, if you guys aren't aware what whataboutism is, it's pretty much like a strategy for you to respond to an accusation with a counter accusation instead of defending the original accusation. So, for example, if the lady said your your false prophet Muhammad lied in this verse, he'll say, oh, no, Jesus lied in this verse, though. Or, for example, a really big one that we try to bring up to Muslims that Muslims try to counter refute with whataboutism is this, for example. Many non-believers, not just Christians, will bring up, why does it say in Sahih Bukhari that Aisha was a six-year-old little girl whenever she was married to six-year-old Muhammad? And then what Muslims like to do is they like to go back to Mary and Joseph. Oh, well, Mary was underage as well. Well, two wrongs don't make a right, first of all. Second of all, the Bible never explicitly states that she's a little girl. Nowhere in history does it support that statement either. In fact, the Bible in history would actually agree with the fact that Mary was a woman when she married Joseph. How do we know this? Because Jesus actually refers to Mary as woman, not girl. And so we do actually see that that is a contradiction within Islam. So now that we refuted the fact that the Bible doesn't say that, why does the Quran and the Hadith still support this idea of child marriage with older men? So that's a great example of what aboutism that they'll try to usually commonly do whenever it comes to PDF files within the Quran and their Hadith. But again, no Muslim will be able to answer that for me without trying to use some kind of deflective tactic because they know it's not an answerable question without making their profit look like a PDF file. Okay, but it gets worse, guys. Like I said, I'm going all in, guys. We're going in death refuting all of these claims, guys. Women are not allowed to be in mosque with men. Now, she did make this claim, and he lied, committing to Kia, saying that they are allowed to. Now, what he's referring to are the very, very, very few mosques in the West where men and women are allowed to go in the same mosque, but even if they're allowed to go in the same mosque, they're not actually allowed to have congregation with each other, right? Because the men in the mosque are so sexually charged that if they just look upon a woman, they might assault her. So this is the reason why they have to actually make a distinction, a barrier, a separation between the two. They both enter to different doors and go into different rooms. There's a big reason for that, guys, because Muslim men know themselves. They know how they would act if there was other women in the mosque with them. But that is the very, very rare case and specific certain Western mosques. For the most part, 99% of mosques don't allow women in there at all. If you go all throughout the Middle East, you'll see nothing but men inside a mosque. Women aren't even able to fully capture the presence of their false god or fully able to experience what it is like to be a Muslim. Why can't they? Because they're not allowed to go into the mosque legally or spiritually according to their false texts. So this is very important for us to remember is that Islam is not only against women, but it doesn't allow women to fully capture what it means to be a true Mohammedan. Now, again, guys, it gets really worse because I do have experience going to the Middle East, Asia, things like that. And so I do. I am really aware of the distinction between males and females. Now. Whenever it comes to Ramadan, because he did mention something about him uh, praying in public and things like that and a way to boast. And she brought up a really good point. This is a big difference between Jesus' teaching and Muhammad's teachings. Now, whenever Muslims fast during Ramadan, they do it more to be seen by men. 
So whenever they fast during Ramadan, it's so that they can receive the glory in the eyes of the world. When Christians fast, we do it so not that we can receive glory in the eyes of men, but we do it to glorify our Father which is in heaven. When Christians fast, we do it to starve our flesh and to feed our spirits. When we do it, it's so that we can deny our flesh and accept the Spirit of God living within us. That's the difference between Christianity and Islam. When we fast, we do it in private. When Muslims fast, they do it in public and they publicize it before the whole world to see. That's the huge difference. And whenever you go to the Middle East, you guys can see that Muslims actually, in fact, the prices of food increase a lot and the amount of food they purchase increases a lot during the month of Ramadan. Now, why is that? It's very clear and simple, guys, because what Muslims are doing is they actually sleep during the day, during Ramadan, so that at nighttime they can go ahead and wake up and they eat a bunch of food to stuff their faces with a bunch of foods so that they can go ahead and continue quote unquote fasting. It's called fake fasting. But I'm not gonna get too much on that point because there's a whole separate video on that. What actually gets worse is whenever these Muslims just casually throw away this Greek Hellenized version of the word Jesus. For example, Esau is just a Greek Hellenized version of the word Yahweh or Yeshua, right? And so whenever you look at the Greek Hellenized version of that, you actually get Esau in the Arabic. So what does that tell you? Actually, in fact, it tells you that false prophet Muhammad had inspiration from the true word of God, the Bible, the Old New Testament, the gospel message. We see that he had that inspiration because the New Testament and the gospels were actually written in Koine Greek. So the fact that he actually refers to Jesus Christ with the Hellenized version, meaning a Greek version of the actual word Yahweh and Yeshua, it actually shows you that he actually had heavy Greek influence from the Bible. So that's literally all Islam is. It's literally just a mixture of Christianity, paganism, and Judaism, and wallah, you get Islam. Now, it obviously gets so much worse, and I have so much to say, guys. It's very difficult to condense all of this in such a short time frame because there's so many issues with what he said. Now, what he did do a lot was commit an informal fallacy. It's a type of incorrect argument in natural language. So for example, this could be uh, when someone argues men are better than women in logical reasoning because men are more rational than women. This is to beg the question, now if being logical just means being rational, then what has been said is just that men are more logical because they are more logical. So basically what he does is he tries to gaslight her and then he uses many different manipulative subjects in order to get her off her feet and to distract her from the regular subject at hand. So what he'll do is he'll move the goalposts from the original subject and then he'll go ahead and put her in a corner where she's forced to answer A or B and there's no other options. And that's the issue, he, he, that's the reason why he's actually so popular is because he's really good at using manipulative tactics and you can actually see how he fidgets with his water throughout the whole video like he's almost going to open it because he gets nervous throughout the whole debate it's very simple and clear that a woman did make him nervous indeed because he is scared of women but he is so cowardly that he has to insult the woman throughout the whole debate and continue to insult her even though he says he's not going to insult her because that's the coward he is just falling after his false prophet now what's interesting is that whenever you look at the Quran, they actually believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Which if you guys don't know, the Messiah is someone that's prophesied to be the Savior throughout Abrahamic faiths. Now how can Jesus Christ be the Messiah if he is not God? Now I don't know about you guys, but the only person who can save us is God Almighty. Another man cannot save us because a man is not free from sin. So are you trying to say that Jesus is free from sin? It's a very ridiculous message that they believe in. It's a very twisted, corrupted message. Yet, they say that we have a corrupted message. There's a lot of evidence that we don't, but I'll go a lot deeper into that. For example, we actually have the papyrus text. If you guys aren't aware, the papyrus text go back to no later than 50 years after the death of Jesus Christ. 
In comparison, the Quran actually was written and fully written and compiled at least 150 to 200 years after Muhammad died. Now, as you guys can notice, not only was the Bible written closer to the time of Christ, but the Quran was not only written further away, but the Quran was revealed way after it was revealed to Muhammad. So there's many issues with that. Not only that, but the people who actually wrote the Bible, we know who they are. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have the rest of the 12 disciples. And we actually see over hundreds of eyewitnesses that were non-Christian. And the Bible, the Word of God, we know not only who the authors are, but when you compare that to Islam, the Quran was written by random scribes. We don't know who they are. They could be pagans. They could be non-believers. They could be criminals. They could be liars. They could be rapists. They could be jihadists. They could be anything. We would never know because we don't know their names. We have no... We have nothing about them there's no evidence about who wrote the quran because as you guys may know muhammad was a lit an illiterate man who didn't read or write and the craziest part about him being illiterate is because of the fact he was illiterate he couldn't confirm what was actually written in the quran and to make it worse out of the multiple quran's that were written there guys what makes it a lot worse is the fact that they actually had like this uh this 100 people play a game of telephone and the 100 people that play telephone they kind of selectively decided who actually had the right version of the quran right and to make it worse uthman just go, went ahead and decided to burn the rest of the qurans out of the 13 versions and kept the one and that's the quran that we have today but the issue is we don't even know if the quran we have today is actually authentic which is crazy about it um but what makes it also crazy too is the fact that whenever you read the quran it's just a recitation it's a song right but what's crazy about it being a song that actually proves that it's from satan even more is that satan was in charge of music in the bible so when you think of how satan was in charge of music in the bible and you look at the quran how it's all just a big old song it makes sense that's why it's so easy to remember because how many of you guys can remember a three minute song so Again, there's so many issues with the with the Quran. And another thing that Muslim Lancer did throughout the video is he actually used a lot of ad hominems. For example, he directed against a person rather than the position they were maintaining. So he would insult her a lot instead of actually attacking the argument itself. And that's what he did by saying, oh, you're not acting feminine enough. You're acting very masculine. If anything, I think Muslim Lantern is a little homo. I think he was actually acting a little too effeminate. And I think he should have acted more masculine. But of course, you know, Muslims always have a double standard. And whenever they come across a woman that the refutes everything they believe in they have to insult them because they're not manly enough and they're too much of a coward to actually refute anything so it's very crazy because he starts just making fun of her at the end of the video and throughout the whole video and another thing he said too is that whenever you look at a law you have a skill right depending on how many good works you do you might be able to inherit paradise the issue with this is that Throughout the whole Quran, never once will you actually see that Allah loves you without you doing any good works. Allah only loves you conditionally versus the God of Scripture, the Word of God, the Bible. You see that actually God loves you unconditionally. While we were yet sinners, God loved us that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. That is the difference between Islam and Christianity. And again, another way that we can actually refute the Quran from its own verse is Surah chapter 3, Ayah 3. It states, he has sent down upon you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, confirming what was before it, and he revealed the Torah and the Gospel. So whenever you actually guys look at the Torah and the Gospel, it states, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Now what's interesting about this is that Galatians 1.8, which was revealed at least 700 years before the Quran, what's interesting about it is the fact that it says, be aware, if any angel comes to you with a different gospel or message, let them be a curse. What happened at least 700 years after the Bible was revealed? Guess what? Angel Gabriel gave a revelation to Muhammad. And what does the Bible also tell us? That Satan, Lucifer, masquerades himself as an angel of light. So it's very interesting because it's not just Islam, it's every other religion that came afterwards. Mormonism. Joseph Smith had a revelation from Angel Moroni. Helena Plavatsky created Theosophy, modern-day spirituality. She had angelic interventions. 
You also have people that are occultists having angelic interventions. People, even the founder of Hebrew Israelites, some African slave, had angelic revelations. So all of these false religions, billions and trillions of souls going to hell because they falsely were led away by a religion that had a revelation from an angel, which actually is a fallen angel. But guys, <laughs> it gets a lot, a lot worse. In fact, whenever you actually see the racism in the Quran compared to scripture, it's undeniably distinct. Now, the reason why I bring up the racism is because you actually see that the Arabic God of Allah, of Islam, is actually just for the Arabs. So the Arabic God, their moon God, right, is not the God for the whole world. Now, how do I know that the Islamic God is just for the Muslims? Well, it's said very clear because in the Quran, they must say their Salah five times a day in Arabic. They cannot say it in any other languages. That's what makes it very, very interesting. And now, whenever we go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues at the, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it tells us that the Holy Ghost gives people the power to speak tongues. So we know that God understands all different tongues. However, when you look at the Quran, their God only speaks Arabic because he only receives prayers in Arabic. He doesn't understand any other language. And actually, that goes into the racism of the Quran and the unification of Christians and how we are a worldwide international religion that doesn't have any favoritism towards races. Now, the way we can see this is in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 to 28. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, nor there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are one in Christ Jesus. So it makes it very clear to us in the word of God, God is not sexist and he is not racist. He loves each and every single one of us as we are his own. Unlike the Quran, it actually refers to Ethiopians as black raisin heads. It says in Sahih al-Bukhari, you should listen to and obey your ruler even if he was an Ethiopian black slave whose head looks like a raisin as an insult. It actually goes further to say the prophet said, I saw in a dream a black woman with unkempt hair going out of Medina and settling at Mahaya. I interpreted that as a symbol of epidemic of Medina being transferred to the place. So it's really crazy because he sees black woman's hair as an epidemic in the Quran. Now, I think that's literally enough information to refute the whole entire video. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, smash that like button, comment what you guys think, and I hope that you guys have a very blessed weekend.